a very warm welcome from our side here from Schlotau and Wauer to a new webcast. We are really happy that you joined us today. We have a new Lisa version, as you already heard, to so the last uh, release 8.0. It's only one year and uh, we start with the next updates. 8.1 is not a major update, but of course with relevant updates. We have here in 8.1, for instance, uh, all new points regarding CITS, or say CCAM um, communication. We have uh, OCC export. We have also in the basic data new part, and that's the word. I start now with the first part, the basic data. I have here, you see my screen, the default version 8.1. I click on configuration to the basic data of my town, the Lisa town. What do you see here? I have a sample intersection here. I have uh, lanes. I did not depict all travel paths. What's now new? Now you can import for the site plan. You can import next to PNG and JPEG data. You can also import DWG data. That's data that you create, for instance, uh, or which you export, for instance, from AutoCAD. So you can click here, import the DWG data, and then you scale it, as you already know. You scale it, and then that's OK. If you imported the DWG data for your basic data, you have now the possibility to select different layouts. How does this work? So in the upper part here, a load site plan, you have here the possibility of CAD configurations. And in CAD configurations, we have here a drop down with layout SLP. And you can select now here different layouts which you configured before beforehand in the AutoCAD data. I did that with my colleagues and I will now change the layout, for instance, to SLP3. And now you see in the same site plan um, uh, different information. For instance, here you see the radius of the different travel paths. And also for the level of service calculation, you see the amount of cars which stop and which you can enter in the level of parameter calculation purposes itself. So that's new in the LISA 8.1. The next new part are graphical detection points. So far, you know from a LISA 8.0 that we have here, I will zoom in a little bit, uh, graphical detectors. You can move them, you can change them here. You have in the properties, you have here the possibility to change here different values to these detectors and also the detector allocations. That's here for the detector. And what's now new is that here in the middle of, you see here of making graphical detectors. So if I would use this icon, I could create a new detector like this and use this detector. I will not do that, I will delete it. We have down of that, you have a detection point. With this detection point, you can do the similar points for detection points. I will click here, I will select a um, uh, lane. I can add now the name here, detector P1, the detector P ID, which detection type it is, and the distance to stop line comes from the distance I chose here. I click on OK, and you see now that the detection point was um, created here, and I can can use it, I can move it, I can move this detection point to different lanes, I can also move this detection point to travel paths, often used for checkout detection. Yeah, for instance, you see here. And that's new part. Why do we have these elements, these objects, detectors, and detection points graphically? The reason is that, for instance, in, uh, if you export this data, if you click on the menu and export this data to the simulation network in, uh, in LISA itself, the detection points and the detectors are at the 
correct position, so they're positioned correctly. The other part is for the map export, you have the possibility to add a no map section. The no map section involves the detection points and detectors with the georeference geo point. And for, for this information, you need the detectors graphically. And the next point is if you export your intersection data, your basic data to Visim via the Visim export, you have this network or you have a detector positioned on the correct point in the simulation, the Visim network in this Visim intersection network. And the last point, this is a new feature for the detection points you will see later. You can use this information of it, of the location um, later on in the detection, um, creating a detection chain, but this is done later. Okay, and now you have um, the part, okay, my lane is only about, yeah, let's say I will move a little bit to the southern lane. The lane is not as long here as mine lanes because you have only a small sketch. Also, you have not enough space, whatever, or the detection point or the detector is long away from the intersection. And you have now, we, we thought about that and we have now here, the new depiction part is that detection points which are out of the lane length depicted are in this dotted kind of way here, yeah? You see this detection point is about 450 meters away from the stop line. And so for that, it is depicted at the end of the lane. And if you move the lane to other points, you see that the detection points is at the end. And here it's saved. The next point is that you, if you move, I will move a little bit, so if I have here the main check in detection point, if I move this detection point over the end of the lane, for instance, about uh, 270 meters, I end the 270 meters in the distance to stop line. You see now that these detection points are depicted in this chain depicting manner. I, if I also enter a new detector, let's say like this, and I enter this detector with 220 meter. Oh, already exists. I will take just one. So, and also the detector is depicted in this dotted member. So this is for detectors and detection points which are out of the length of the detector. The next point is also if I have a detector on the lane and I move length of the, of the lane, I move it. So the detector automatically is etched somehow and depicted in this manner. So this is a really cool new feature. We implemented in the basic data. So the next part is um, everything with a sketch. So I start, you have this intersection, it's really big and you want to have the basic data. So far, you know, from the, you have the intersection sketch here at the upper right part, at this next to the question mark here. You open the intersection sketch, you see this intersection, you see here the intersection with all uh, the lanes, you see the detectors. We now implemented a feature that you can see more than two detectors. You can see as many detectors as are all allocated on the lane. You don't see now the test detector because I did not save the basic data. And now we can configure the sketch somehow. How can we configure the sketch? You can configure it with right click and you can say, okay, I want to fill it with colors. I want to have the detectors for the crossings depicted or not depicted with this. And now new is that you can show the map lane IDs. Why do you need that? You need it, for instance, if you want to create an SRAM intersection logic and you want to see which lane is allocated to which approach and so on and so on. And for that, you need the map lane IDs. And the map lane IDs are different to the LISA lane IDs because of historic reasons. And the LISA lane IDs are for every approach, you start with one normally. 
and the map lane ID is that one number at an intersection cannot be doubled. So the the numbers which are ongoing, that's the map lane IDs, and the numbers which are like starting with one at every approach, they are the map lane IDs. In general, a topic map, it's getting more and more important to have CITS messages or be CITS ready. It means uh, corporate intelligent traffic services. Um, for instance, in the German region, the normal radio frequency R09 is new structured at 2028. For that, you need new messages. Um, you need SRM messages, for instance, that are the next generation of prioritization messages after the R09. And for SRM messages, you need like the digital kind of the basic data of, of the intersection topology. And this map message, this digital um, message of the intersection topology is created from Lisa as a Lisa echo port. You only need um, with the basic data, you have uh, georeference points you can set here in Lisa to the coordinate points here you get from Google Maps, for instance. You set the georeference points and every map is somehow configured. And now new in Lisa 8.1, we have the possibility to configure this in the, in the basic data. You can see this configuration. For instance, if I delete this detection point, if I click on a lane, I have now here in the left part, I have here lane attributes of this lane. So I have here the lane ID. I can change it, but it's not uh, yeah, necessary to change it, but I could. I have also the ingress approach, which is an element which is in the map message later on if you export it. And um, this ingress approach is not changeable, but it's allocated to this approach, Lisa approach here. So the lane is not connected to an egress approach, so this is null. Yeah. Then you have a possibility to see if it has a directional use. Uh, it's a bit co bit coordinated. So here you see one or zero shared width, uh, lane type, and so on. These are attributes of the map which are depicted here in the basic data. So Lisa enables here the map messages, and also if you change here information because you have different information in the site plan so on. You can, for instance, I will now show the travel path of this lane and I will change now here to tram and yeah, only to tram only like this. And you see now that in the lane type was before it was vehicle, now it's tracked vehicle. So the changes are automatically done uh, by you. So now I have track vehicle. I could change it now back to vehicle and bicyclist. And now again, vehicle, bicyclist, and the lane uh, type is now changed to vehicle backwards. Automatically by Lisa, you don't have to do it. So this is a part of the map, the lane. Another part of the map is connecting lanes with um, in Lisa, it's travel paths. In the map context, it's uh, connections. If I click on a travel path, you see here connection attributes. Yeah, if I delog it here, you see that also travel paths have a certain connection ID, have an, a destiny lane, and the signal group is allocated in the connection. So that means for the information you already knew, use for the intergreen time calculation, that you click on a lane, you select a signal group here at the bottom and uh, do the intergreen time calculation. These information are saved here in Lisa and this information are used then later on automatically. So here automatic for the map export, here you can see now more automatic V1. And this is automatically chosen by Lisa. You can now, if, if you want, change it manually, but it's not necessary to have a correct 
map it's done automatically by Lisa. So this is the part, the lane, the, so the lane or the Lisa lane and the map lane and the travel paths, the travel path or the connection. And the third point is that you have uh, node attributes, no nodes. A lane consists of many nodes. You can see here the nodes uh, as rectangles here. And if I click on such a segment, line segment, you see it now. If I click on a lane again, I have here a rectangle and here a rectangle. And if I click at this line segment, you see that it's now here orange, orange red, and you have here like a point. And that means all attributes I now start to configure were seen here in the node attributes you have here. You can now select attributes only for this node, for this segment. You can, for instance, say here we have a do not block area, and this is configured only for this segment. So we have again the lane, connections, the nodes, and in general, it's now possible for this digital map if you have a georeference point. I have it here. GIS coordinate point. If I click here on uh, selecting a new one, you select the geodetic system. You have here the georeference coordinates, and news also here adding an elevation to this intersection. So at which which elevation from sea level you have your intersection. Um, this could be done here. So far. I do not know if it's really necessary for uploading it to a roadside units, but you could do it here in ESA. Okay, that's so far to the basic data. I do not see any questions so far. So we move on to other models. I click here now on cancel. I close that without saving. And I go now to the elevation parameters. Um, here we have a new uh, feature regarding the pedestrian and bicycle uh, information. Um, with uh, Lisa 8.0, we depict now here on the legs the um, yeah the streams of pedestrians and bicyclists. That means here the 30. You see how many pedestrians are crossing this leg. You have the amount here by clicking vehicle flow on the right side. Then you click pedestrian bicycle flows. You have the volumes. And if you have traffic counting, for instance, you can enter the data here. It is depicted here and you can yeah, activate or deactivate this depicting these values. And now new is that you have also here this table you have um, the legs, one, two, three, four, and the yeah, pedestrian bicycle flows, pedestrian bicycle here, and the volumes here. With deactivating the volumes, you also deactivate this table. You can move this table however you want and uh, can later on print it. Okay, then I move on. I go to the detectors. Here we have also a small part uh, regarding yeah, make working with Lisa easier. That means um, copying values to other lines. Um, for instance, I create now here five and I want to have this maximum time gap five for all lines. I don't have to go for all lines and type in five. You can now click here with right click, say copy value to column. You get a confirmation message and the five is now in all lines included. This information is done here in the detectors. This is also possible in the detector tests to create or to, 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 to copy values to other lines. I move on to the public transport. 
in the public transport in the yeah, subcategory detection chain, you have now here in the upper part this new icon calculate all distances. What is meant with that? I click on it. With calculating all distances, you can see here a detection chain. You can see here the detection points which are allocated to this detection chain. So pre check in, main check in, check out. We saw these detection points in the basic data. And you get here the distance automatically to this detection chain. So we get this 450 meters, we get here this 160 meters. And here we have the check out on the, on the connection. This is minus 20 meter behind the stop line. And uh, if you have the distances not included so far, I will can delete it. So like this, I can click on calculate all distances. I can say the rounding, okay, and the distances are automatically filled. That makes life easier or work easier if you have many detection chain and, and also detection points if you use the, the graphical detection points and you don't have to copy the distances manually and put it here into this table. That's to the public transport. Now I move on to the intergreens, for instance. I could also open the conflicts. Here I use a different example with sub intersections. What do you see now here is the new part. This the new part is yellow. What does it mean? At this intersection, I can open the sketch. I have uh, three sub intersections. I have main sub in the main sub intersection. I have here a sub intersection with only pedestrians and here a sub intersection with uh, pedestrians. And the intergreens between this sub intersection, this sub intersection can't be checked by the control units. Or in general, it can't be checked. And in general, it's interesting which signal group is allocated to which uh, sub intersection. And now in Lisa, it's depicted which signal groups then if signal groups are at the same sub intersection, the cell is white. For instance, the K01 uh, signal group and the yeah year, the northern part, and the signal group uh, K02 is here at the same sub intersection. It's uh, white, and the uh, but the signal group K11, for instance, it's not at the same sub intersection. It's uh, like uh, K1, and so it's yellow. And um, the signal groups which are at the same um, sub intersection, like this sub intersection two, are yellow again. So it creates these rectangles, makes work here at this part also easier. This is also depicted in the conflicting matrix. Okay, let's move on to the stage transitions. Oop, let's back to our example. In the stage transitions, you have often that you change the stage and um, the stage transitions are already um, created and you only you don't want to have a recreation with changing the green length and so on. You only want to change the name. For instance, um, yeah, in the stages, but also in the settings, you change uh, here the general, uh, you change the prefix for new plans. I have now here, I can enter now, stage transition is STR and the delimiter is like a minus. I want to have this for all plans now. I click in OK. Now I can click here on the stage transition. I click on right click. I can here use this here recreate names, this line. I do that and you see now that uh, stage transitions are renamed without changing here something at the stage transition. That's if you want to have change here, the stage transitions because of reasons when you use all ST uh, to regenerate the transitions itself. This is just the renaming with right click, renaming the names. OK. Now we came to a major new part in the Lisa 8.1. It's the signal timing plans, clicking on uh, Lisa Town again. So, 
what's now new here is if I go to the stages and I'm change stage 11 to stage uh, let's change here. Uh, stage one to 11. OK, I save that. I save and close that. Go to the stage transitions. You see now that now currently the stage transition renames at the normal name one to two. And if I click now with right click to recreate names, it's now create uh, changed to 11 to two, two to 11, whatever. So it's um, connected to the stages and it's automatically using your new names. OK, I have to change that back. Good. So in the signal timing plans, we have this uh, STP overview now new here. The model is not new, but we extended it. In general, in the Lisa 8.1, zero or older you have here the name you have you had the id number you have the i guess maybe you have the blind type and the last change now we extended here this table with additional informations like uh, the pre-timed information so which um, operation mode does this stp have so pre-timed traffic actuated or manual operation also, we added here the parameters, but which logic parameter sets do you have here? So set one on logic, detector parameter sets, public transfer parameter sets, permission plans, and the allocated activation deactivation plans. These informations are here depicted, makes it easier. If you have a lot of signal timing plans, you don't have to go through all plans. Yeah, click on them, depict the properties and so on. So now you have here big list with all STPs. You can not only depict them, uh, you have also here the possibility yeah, to change information. For instance, here you can change the parameter set. I have click here on the parameter sets. I have a drop down and you see here I change it to yeah, set two or to set three. Yeah, and save that. So this is automatically then changed here in the properties. And um, you can not only depict signal timing plans without documentation, we have here the part show documentation plans. That means that you also depict, if you compare this tree view with this depicting, you also see stage based STPs and alternative plans or plans with this documentation only mark a little bit bigger, bigger here now so now you see here that this alternative plan demand demand uh, left turns it says alternative plan has of course no operation mode because it's not uh, uploaded to a control unit and you have here the parameter sets okay maybe you need to allocate them maybe you know and here is a column with documentation only. And of course here, the stage-based STPs were also depicted here um, for reasons. This um, table, so depicting, have a nice overview of all STPs, also have a, an, to change here the sets. I think it's more easier to change. And what you can also do with this table, you can of course have this table in the batch print change here we'll now close this model go into lisa and go for this intersection into the batch print in the batch print you see now this stp overview up of the signal timing plans on the left part i have here signal time plans 2.2 models over that you have the stp overview you have here this sketch and you see here, um, yeah, that you have a sketch and uh, with all information like here and could allocate it to your batch print. I think it's a nice, um, yeah, a nice overview or table of contents for the upcoming signal timing plans. That's it for the STPs. Also in the, if we are here in the batch print, 
we have for level of service calculation. Here, this part is new that you can separate the printing issues for level of service. Uh, for instance, here, the print evaluation, you can activate here the level of service for vehicle signal groups. You can activate, deactivate the level of service calculation to pedestrian signal groups. And also, you can uh, depict the legend here and uh, configure that for every level of service calculation uh, page for all for every signal timing plan. Good. So now going back to the next module to the traffic actuated control to the test site. What do we have here? In the test site, we have in the tests itself a new action item. I open that. Here you see that we have here actions and we have here actions for setting a, de a detector or off detector, detector flow, PT telegrams. And what's new is now here PT telegram in green. What does it mean? This action here. PT telecom green means this um, this action is only triggered if the relevant signal group is green. It makes it, yeah, the use cases makes it more realistic. For instance, you often need that for the checkout of a public transport. Um, a public transport crosses the stop line and checks out at a checkout detection point. We saw that in the basic data before. Only if, of course, only if it's green and not red. And that was so far missing. Now we implement it now. It's uh, similar to the action PT Telegram. The new part is here, PT Telegram in green that you have here, signal group allocation. Yeah, if you compare here the value of the parameters, that's here, the PT Telegram. And here you have the PT Telegram in green with a signal group and you can select here the corresponding signal group to the checkout action. What can you do with this? Yeah, you can combine that to a new feature, and this is called a, the PT cyclical test. Um, in some cities, we have to do a cyclical test. That means after a certain time, you have PT demand in a cycle. When you wait a few sec, a few cycles, and in the next three cycles, you have another PT detection. And this is done here automatically now in Lisa 8.1. If you click so far on the create here on this, I can create public transport test routines. We delete this so far, okay. I click here on this icon, create public transport test routines. And now, what you see here is um, you have to select a signal timing plan, of course, because you the, the test has to know which length has a cycle. So I will use um, STP1. Then you have to select a detection chain. Why do you have to select a detection chain? In the detection chain, the travel uh, parameters or time parameters are saved. Yeah, you have from uh, you have these time parameters from pre check in to main check in. A value then from main check in to check out a value. And these parameters are loaded automatically into the test routine. And according to these parameters, you have here the PT telegrams. These are here set in this manner in this time uh, periods you defined before in the PT model. Then in the yeah, down part here, you have um, how many cycles have to have to be between the check-ins of the public transport. And here you have the step size in seconds. So you have a check-in at second, yeah, let's say 60. And, and after three cycles, you have another check-in at 61. Okay, I will now click on create. So this is created here. I will show that now. I will close that, save and start that. Now I activate this test routine, scenario out, PT is out, okay. I will now 
start STP1, apply, start this here. Okay, let's start. So, what you can see here, if we are in stage one, so here at second 59, we have a check in and we have here an automatic check out. And after three cycles, let's say about uh, 220 seconds, we have another check in cyclical at check in at second 60. Yeah, with the same procedure. And now you can move on. Now we have another check in at second 61. Why do you do that? For instance, you want to test how long is your wait time, how long it depends till the according signal group of the bus gets green. And for this measurement, you use this new test sample. Okay. Then we go, I save and close that and we go back to logic. I have here a minor point before I came to the CITS parts. Here in the logic, in the parameter sets, you can now move here the sets. So that means uh, I have now here set one and set two. And now I can click on move. I can move this set one here. And that's not possible. I have here in a different order. Also, here new is in the controller function and the OML library 3.1. It's uh, similar to 3.0. We added a new 3.1 because of the CITS functions. We have a new additional library. It's called CITS library 2.0. This new library C. CITS uh, 2.0 involves now the new categories CAM, uh, now the new categories SRAM and SSM. CAM and MAP was so far available in uh, CITS library 1.0 and OML 3.0. So now we have here SRAM and SSM message functions. What does it mean? I have now can click on it. I can click here. And have here the functions. We can ask um, how many SRAMs are presented to the intersection and so on. And how does the system work? So an SRM, uh, SRM is sended by an emergency car or a public transport. However, doesn't matter which car it is. It's only if it could is if it has allowance to send SRAM messages. These SRM messages are somehow um, transferred to the control unit if it tr is transferred to uh, via roadside unit, via Wi-Fi or via central uh, traffic central, via um, cellular network, doesn't matter for us. We have here the functions just to read the information of the SRMs. And here in the functions, you have basically the, the, the we call it vehicle buffer. The vehicle buffer is like a, a list of messages which is transferred from the control unit then to the uh, control logic itself to us in the in the logic. And we take this information. We have here it's uh, oriented on the car, so it has a station ID that somehow uh, uh, like every car has a identifier, a station ID, and for every car, you can then um, ask of certain attributes. That means you can ask uh, of an ETAR, yeah, estimated time of arrival. So the car can send an estimated time of arrival, can say, okay, I'm at the intersection at 20 seconds. I want to get uh, prioritized from inbound to outbound approach or lanes or whatever. And you can get this in information the car sends to you and put it into your local control and yeah, prioritize this car according to the SRAM messages. And you have, and every SRAM is um, yeah, approved by an SSM that's coming backwards. So the car is sending an SRAM and the control does something, coordinates and is sending back an SSM. That means every 
the, the car which sends the SRAM gets an SSM back. That's like information from the control unit back, which says, okay, I grant your prioritization or I reject uh, your prioritization or um, watch other traffic min in, uh, so far. I have other in, uh, other cars which are get prioritized. For instance, the emergency car gets first prioritization and the bus gets later on. So um, this is here done in the logic with these functions. And of course, if you create such a logic, you have to test it. Mm -hmm. And I go to the test side. For that, we have new mm, models, new windows, which you can do that. So you can run here, run a simulation like this. And you, with right click, you can send your camps and SRAMs. I open here the windows, SRAM. And now you can define the, the, yeah, the SRAM which appears in your logic. This has, of course, be yeah discussed with, uh, with the bus uh, company or with the city authorities, which information are in the SRAM. You can now, I will now send just an SRAM message, make it off. Uh, the station ID of the bus is just, uh, I don't know, 100. Could be, of course, different. I will be at the intersection of 60 seconds. The priority request is a priority request. Um, I'm uh, public transport, the sub role and importance level, I will say level one. Important here is the inbound and outbound. I'm coming from leg one and get prioritized to leg two and send this information. And here in the downer part, you see here site DTS list. You see here now all information of the SRM which are at the intersection and this information here are now getting, yeah, they can be read by the functions, by the SRM station attribute function. And with this information, you can now start your control. You can ask, for instance, if is there an, a bus wanted to be get, uh, get prioritized from inbound approach one to two and which ETA do, does this car have, or this bus have, and uh, then do the necessary steps to get this car and prioritization. So this is new, the CITS library 2.0, new here in LISA 8.1. We have also some other parts in LISA 8.1, for instance, uploading the control to uh, my city, or we have now new to OZIT C. So far we had OZIT E, so now it's possible to do uploads for OZIT E. C and with a new Lisa Visim device or control device, you can now select in Visim itself in the scenario manager in the column of program number. You can enter the value. So Visim automatically checks the signal timing plan number, and the signal timing plan number has. Um, activate it according to the number you enter in the column program number. Yeah, so you can create in Visim different uh, modifications or scenarios. You enter in the column program number, the signal time plan number of Lisa, and then in the relevant Visim simulation, Visim chooses or yeah, chooses the correct signal timing plan. So you don't have to do different exports or select manually in the OMTC user interface, the signal timing plan. Okay, that's it to Lisa 8.1. Thanks a lot for joining us today. And as always, we are at your service if you have further questions. Please contact us at service at schlotower.de if you have any technical questions or if you want to quote an offer, have uh, any sales related questions, then please contact us at lisa at schlotower.de. Thanks and have a nice day.